Gurudev is saying, I'll give whatever you desire. We're in this world because God gave us the choice and the opportunity to be here. It's an opportunity. Going to the spiritual world is also an opportunity. It's nothing you have to be forced to do. But most people are looking for Maya. Most people are looking for enjoying in this world. Most people are looking for trying to eat, make, and you know, make merry in this world. Gurudev would say, "Make merry, eat, drink, and be merry." But we're trying to give them something different, and so it's something that's very interesting because it's almost something that you have to rebel against the common current to get. We are rebels. We are the true rebels because 99.9% .9 of everyone's going towards Maya. So we, we say that we want to go against that current of Maya and go towards Krishna. In this world, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Anadi Bahir Mukh, almost everyone is against God. Or they're worshipping God for selfish reasons. They're not truly following Bhakti only for this one point of devotion for Braja Bhakti. Why Braja Bhakti? Because the Braja Bhaktis are only worshipping Krishna with pure love, no selfish desire, nothing for themselves, only let Krishna be happy, only favorable to Krishna. That's something that's truly rare. So Gurudev came to give us this truly rare thing that's also a very special opportunity. How is it a special opportunity? The process of bhakti is so special that even Krishna follows the process of bhakti. The sadhana and sadhya is the same. The process and the goal in bhakti is the same. And even Krishna is following this process. Even God himself is following this process of bhakti because it gives him so much bliss. How is that? So that's why I'm saying is bhakti is not something we force upon people. Oh, I have a, you meet somebody on the street. I have something very amazing to tell you. A process that even God, the supreme entity is following to be happy. You want to be happy? Here's the process that even God is following. Kirtan. Krishna is doing kirtan every day. The sakas, when they're entering the forest, they're doing kirtan. The gopis are doing kirtan. Govinda dhamo dharamadaveti. The gopis do kirtan. Yashoda Mata, Nanda Baba, they do kirtan. Mahaprabhu does kirtan constantly. Krishna, Ras Lila is kirtan. So what we are doing is bhakti is what? Shravanam, kirtanam, smartanam, dancing in kirtan. This is bhakti yoga. This is such a special opportunity, such a special thing. Not something that we are forcing people, rules and regulations that causes you so much difficulty. Oh, you have to do it. Wake up early and do kirtan, dance. When we were with Prabhuji in Navadweep, Prabhuji didn't have to call us to dance. Hundreds of people dancing so ecstatically in Gaur Kirtan. You didn't have to tell somebody, oh, get up and dance. Automatically everyone's dancing. Krishna is dancing. This is Bhakti. In Brajadam, Ras Lila, Krishna is dancing with the gopis. In Brajadam, Krishna is doing Kirtan. Krishna is hearing Harikata in Brajadam. Every day Krishna sits and hears Harikata. It's so relishable. So even the process of what we are following is such a special thing that even God is following it. Harikata. Every day Krishna hears Snigda Kanta Madhukanta. Those who were like in this world the lowest in debauchis, engaged in the lowest things, when they went to the spiritual world, Snigda Kanta Madhukanta, every day they speak Harikata to Krishna. Radha Rani, Krishna, the bridge bhajis all sit down and hear Harikata. So Harikata is such a special thing that even God is following the process. Even Krishna is doing Shravanam Kirtan, not because he has to, but because he wants to. Krishna can do whatever he wants. Who's going to tell Krishna, oh, you have to get up and go to Kata? God can create his own world however he wants, but every day Krishna goes and hears Hari Kata. Every day, Radharani. And are they hearing Hari Kata only like, oh, take shower in the morning, brush your teeth, put on tilak, go to Mangalarti? No, they're hearing sweet Krishna Kata or devotees Kata. So Harikata on that level, not just, oh, don't take drugs, don't have illicit sex, don't eat meat. But they've said these things have to be taught. But we want to go to Swarup Siddha Bhakti, eternal bhakti. That's such a special thing that nobody practically follows. Practically nobody follows it. If we follow it, we can be true re rebels like Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is running off into the forest to do the Ras dance. All the gopis are going, rebelling against the social norms. But for bhakti. And bhakti is such a powerful, special thing that even Krishna is enjoying the bliss of bhakti. Bhakti is what gives bliss. Shraddha to Prem, everything is bhakti. From the first stage of Shraddha up to Prem, it's all bhakti. And it's all giving transcendental pleasure. So even Mahaprabhu, Krishna, Radharani, they all follow these processes. That's why it's, our process is very ecstatic. Hearing Harikata, 
if we're hearing from pure Vaishnavas, it's naturally very ecstatic. You're hearing from Vaishnavas like Gurudev, Vaishnavacharyas, describing Krishna Leela, reading Goswami's books, Ananda Vrindavan Champu. It's very ecstatic. It's a blissful process. Surup Siddha Bhakti, hearing Harikata, doing Kirtan, Smaranam. Krishna is sitting and doing meditation, meditating on Shimadhi Radhika and the gopis. Radharani is meditating on Krishna, chanting, doing Kirtan, going to the Jamuna. All these processes, everything Mahaprabhu is doing, it's all full of ecstasy. Mahaprabhu says, Pratipadang Purna Amrita Swaram. At every step, he's experiencing ecstasy. So we have to get there. We were in New York. Someone was asking, okay, how do, why are we, like, sometimes bhakti feels like so much difficulty. It's because we're, you know, we don't like to get over the first initial hump. It's like you don't know how to ski or snowboard, so you keep falling on your butt. It hurts, but if you learn how to do it, it's blissful. <laughs> learn how to do the process, it's blissful. We're not endeavoring hard enough to get over the initial curve of our anartas. The, when we start following bhakti, we get anartas. Kleshagni or Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, the forest fire is being extinguished. At that time, it's raging, and so many desires are going here and there, and it's causing us so much disturbance. And then we tend to retreat, and then we go back into Maya, and we follow the herd. We follow whatever oh, everyone else is doing, Sangsar. Like, you know, oh, my father did it, I should do it. My, he is, he, my, you ask your father, why should I? Oh, just get married, work your whole life, maintain your family, but for what? Oh, my father did it. And you ask the grandfather why he did it. Oh, my father did it. And he says, my father did it. And so these generations have been going on for so many millions of years, everyone following sangsar. Bas, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Like humans or animals, two-legged animals. Just doing, you know, following your natural kind of physical dharma, you know, but nothing for the soul. So what we're trying to do is change that force going towards sangsara and apply it towards the transcendental achievement of uh, the Krishna's abode or you could say like the sublimination of the soul's desire into pure love for Krishna and that's something that's truly special so Gurudev came to give us and that's something that he's trying to teach us to desire because ultimately desire is the cost greed is the price right Gurudev says what is the cost to get this greed so he's saying, I'll give you whatever you desire. So how can we develop the greed for this? That's the only price we have to pay. This story is showing that it's, it seems, oh, it's very easy. I'll give you whatever you desire. But the process is easy, but do you desire it or not? Do we really want to be in Krishna's abode? Do we really want it? If we want it, okay, take it. Follow the steps that Krishna himself is following to get it. Kirtan, Harikata, Smaran, trying to Anukulya Savarjanam, Pratukulya Savarjanam, trying to gradually reduce things which are unfavorable to bhakti and increase things that are favorable to bhakti. Otherwise, Atyahara Prayasha Prajalpaniya Magraha, Jana Sangha Stalogyan says, Hadbir Bhakti Vinashyati. These things diminish the cultivation of bhakti. So we want, if we want bhakti to flourish, take away those things that are destroying bhakti, take more of those things that are nourishing bhakti and realize that this is such a special, wonderful thing. So, we'll read one more quick section and then we'll go. Next session, Gurudev says, so next section is called With Love or By Force. One day, a brahmachari asked Srila Gurudev, you, gave, you came to give Krishna Prem. You have it, so please give it to me. I would like it immediately. So it's kind of following the previous story. Okay, I want it right now. I want it right now. Prabhupada likes to tell the story of a, um, a mother had a, a baby girl. And she was only like two, three years, um, you know, four or five years old, starting to play with dolls. She told her mother, oh, I want a baby. When am I going to have a baby? When am I going to have a baby? You know, like little girls, they like to play with dolls. She said, I want my own baby. So the mother said, don't worry. She said, when will I have it? When will I have it? She tells the mother, if I'm sleeping at night and I have a baby, wake me up. If I'm sleeping at night, I have a baby, wake me up. Her mother said, don't worry. When you're having a baby, you won't be asleep. <laughs> You'll be awake. So when it's we're ready for it, it's going to come. So he's asking Gurudev, you have it, so give it to me at once. 
So Gurudev laughed and he said, Counting all of your activities up to this day, what have you done to attain Krishna Prem? Pure divine love. What have you done to attain it? Anything? Oh, I hear Harikata, I take prasadam, I live in the temple. Krishna takes prasadam also every day. They cook in Nanda Bhavan, they offer to Shalagraham, they offer to Lakshmi Narayan, and he takes prasadam. Krishna, I hear Harigata, I take prasad, I live in the temple, I say, serve, I chant Harinam, I practice the limbs of bhakti, yet I still have no love for Krishna. So then Gurudev said, some do their sadhana by force, without any spiritual greed. Love cannot come by force. We were also talking about this in New York City before, with a few days ago. Spiritual athletics, do or die, I'm going to wake up at 2 in the morning and chant one lakh Harinam and run 10 miles, parikrama. We do it by force and okay, Vaidhi Bhakti, we have to do the sadhana, do the sadhana. In the beginning you have to struggle and just do it. But ultimately pure love is not going to come like that. Love comes from love. Bhakti comes from bhakti. You have to please the devotee who has the bhakti, serve him with love naturally, not just by force. And then he can give it. Do you force yourself to follow my instructions and the instructions of Sashtra or do you do it out of love and spiritual greed? Do you really want that Krishna Prem or are you just telling me because you think you know, it's supposed to be what you want. Oh, Gurudev gives me Krishna Prem, then my life will be solved. I won't be struggling anymore. I'll be out of this world. But do you really want that love? Do you really want to serve Krishna with love? Do you really want it? So he says, you have to try to follow if you f with greed. And he says, if you forget to chant Japa for one day, oh, you think, oh, I'm very lucky. I didn't have this bother. All right. Oh, two, three days, Mala's in the cupboard. Oh, no problem. A few days later, you find, okay, I'll chant a few rounds. But do you feel like, oh, I forgot to chant. Alas, alas, I've neglected my Prananath, my beloved Krishna. Krishna is Harinam. Harinam and Krishna is non-different. I've neglected Harinam Prabhu, my beloved Krishna. Do you feel like sadness, longing? Oh, I have no taste for Harinam. Alas, my Krishna is waiting there, but I have no love for him. You think eating and sleeping is the most important thing in your life. So where is your love? You have love for eating and sleeping. Every minute should be used to serve Krishna, but how much time to you use in the service of your body and mind, and how much do you endeavor to attain Krishna Bhakti Ras? You must enthusiastically engage the senses in service and bhakti under the guidance of a premi bhakta, someone who has this pure love. By staying with the premi bhakta with feelings of mamata, possessive affection, his love for Krishna will gradually awaken in your heart. You will then experience the intense pain of being separated from Krishna and you will want to meet Krishna more than you want to take your next breath. Then you will be prepared to enter Braj. Prabhupada said the same thing. Someone said, when will I meet Krishna? When you want to see him more than you want to take your next breath. Then you will be prepared to enter Braj. Krishna is with us in our heart, Paramatma. Gurudev is with us, but are we with Krishna and Gurudev? He is with us. Paramatma is there, Gurudev is there, but do we want them? So Gurudev is saying we have to try to develop this greed. We have to try to develop this love. And the way to do it is Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. Be with those devotees who have it. Be with the devotees who have it or be under their guidance trying to follow their instructions with a sincere mood and then gradually this love can come. You have to do the sadhana, but try to develop the love by being under guidance of those who have it and by being serious about what you're actually asking for. Basically, they're not, why would they give it to us if we're not serious? It's such a precious treasure. If, they're not, if we're not serious for it, then we'll misuse it for this world. They give you prayer love, then you're going to use it in this world. Oh, for so many lovers and beloveds. You use this bhakti for them. You're not going to use it for Krishna. So Gurudev is saying, develop sincerity, develop firm desire, firm attachment. And it's a process. Gurudev is saying, I'll give you whatever you desire, but you have to follow the process to get it. Like if you want to be a scientist, okay. You have to follow the process. Go through the procedure, then gradually it can come.